Then David said, The house of the Lord God is to be here, and also the altar of burnt offering for Israel. So David gave orders to assemble the foreigners residing in Israel, and from among them he appointed stone cutters to prepare dressed stone for building the house of God. He provided a large amount of iron to make nails for the doors of the gateways and for the fittings, and more bronze than could be weighed. He also provided more cedar logs than could be counted, for the Sidonians and Tyrians had brought large numbers of them to David. David said, My son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord should be of great magnificence and fame and splendor in the sight of all the nations. Therefore, I will make preparations for it. So David made extensive preparations before his death. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had it in my heart to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. But this word of the Lord came to me. You have shed much blood and have fought many wars. You are not to build a house for my name, because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. But you will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side. His name will be Solomon, and I will grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. He is the one who will build a house for my name. He will be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, the Lord be with you. And may you have success and build the house of the Lord your God, as he said you would. May the Lord give you discretion and understanding when he puts you in command over Israel. So that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will have success if you are careful to observe the decrees and laws that the Lord gave Moses for Israel. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. I have taken great pains to provide for the temple of the Lord. A hundred thousand talents of gold, a million talents of silver, quantities of bronze and iron too great to be weighed, and wood and stone, and you may add to them. You have many workers, stone cutters, masons, and carpenters, as well as those skilled in every kind of work in gold and silver, bronze and iron, skilled workers beyond number. Now begin the work, and the Lord be with you. Then David ordered all the leaders of Israel to help his son Solomon. He said to them, Is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not granted you rest on every side? For he has given the inhabitants of the land into my hands, and the land is subject to the Lord and to his people. Now devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. Begin to build the sanctuary of the Lord God, so that you may bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the sacred articles belonging to God into the temple that would be built for the name of the Lord. When David was old and full of years, he made his son Solomon king over Israel. He also gathered together all the leaders of Israel, as well as the priests and Levites. The Levites thirty years old or more were counted, and the total number of men was thirty-eight thousand. David said, Of these, twenty-four thousand are to be in charge of the work of the temple of the Lord, and six thousand are to be officials and judges. Four thousand are to be gatekeepers, 
and 4,000 are to praise the Lord with the musical instruments I have provided for that purpose. David separated the Levites into divisions corresponding to the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Mirari. Belonging to the Gershonites, Laden and Shimei, the sons of Laden, Jehiel the first, Zetham and Joel, three in all. The sons of Shimei, Shilomoth, Haziel and Haran, three in all. These were the heads of the families of Laden. And the sons of Shimei, Jehath, Ziza, Jeush, and Beriah. These were the sons of Shimei, four in all. Jehath was the first and Ziza the second, but Jeush and Beriah did not have many sons, so they were counted as one family with one assignment. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uzziel, four in all. The sons of Amram, Aaron and Moses. Aaron was set apart, he and his descendants forever to consecrate the most holy things, to offer sacrifices before the Lord, to minister before him, and to pronounce blessings in his name forever. The sons of Moses, the man of God, were counted as part of the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses, Gershom and Eliezer. The descendants of Gershom, Shubael was the first. The descendants of Eliezer, Rehobiah was the first. Eliezer had no other sons, but the sons of Rehobiah were very numerous. The sons of Ishar, Shilomoth was the first. The sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechameam the fourth. The sons of Uzziel, Micah the first, and Ishiah the second. The sons of Mirari, Malai and Mushai. The sons of Malai, Eleazar and Kish. Eleazar died without having sons. He had only daughters. Their cousins, the sons of Kish, married them. The sons of Mushai, Malai, Eder, and Jeremoth, three in all. These were the descendants of Levi by their families, the heads of families as they were registered under their names and counted individually, that is, the workers, 20 years old or more, who served in the temple of the Lord. For David had said, Since the Lord, the God of Israel, has granted rest to his people and has come to dwell in Jerusalem forever, the Levites no longer need to carry the tabernacle or any of the articles used in its service. According to the last instructions of David, the Levites were counted from those 20 years old or more. The duty of the Levites was to help Aaron's descendants in the service of the temple of the Lord, to be in charge of the courtyards, the side rooms, the purification of all sacred things, and the performance of other duties at the house of God. They were in charge of the bread, set out on the table, the special flour for the grain offerings, the thin loaves made without yeast, the baking and the mixing, and all measurements of quantity and size. They were also to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord. They were to do the same in the evening and whenever burnt offerings were presented to the Lord on the Sabbaths, at the new moon feasts, and at the appointed festivals, they were to serve before the Lord regularly in the proper number and in the way prescribed for them. And so the Levites carried out their responsibilities for the tent of meeting, for the holy place, and under their relatives, the descendants of Aaron, for the service of the temple of the Lord. These were the divisions of the descendants of Aaron. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father did, and they had no sons. So Eleazar and Ithamar served as the priests. With the help of Zadok, a descendant of Eleazar, 
and Ahimelech, a descendant of Ithamar, David separated them into divisions for their appointed order of ministry. A larger number of leaders were found among Eleazar's descendants than among Ithamar's, and they were divided accordingly. Sixteen heads of families from Eleazar's descendants and eight heads of families from Ithamar's descendants. They divided them impartially by casting lots, for there were officials of the sanctuary and officials of God among the descendants of both Eleazar and Ithamar. The scribe Shemaiah, son of Nethanel, a Levite, recorded their names in the presence of the king and of the officials, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, and the heads of families of the priests and of the Levites, one family being taken from Eleazar and then one from Ithamar. The first lot fell to Jehorib, the second to Judea, the third to Haran, the fourth to Seorim, the fifth to Malchijah, the sixth to Mijamin, the seventh to Hakas, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jacob, the thirteenth to Huppa, the fourteenth to Jeshebiah, the fifteenth to Bilga, the sixteenth to Immer, the seventeenth to Hezer, the eighteenth to Hapaziz, the nineteenth to Pethahiah, the twentieth to Jehezkel, the twenty-first to Jacob, the twenty-second to Gamal, the twenty-third to Deleah, and the twenty-fourth to Maalziah. This was their appointed order of ministering when they entered the temple of the Lord, according to the regulations prescribed for them by their ancestor Aaron, as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded him. As for the rest of the descendants of Levi, from the sons of Amram, Shubael, from the sons of Shubael, Jedeah. As for Rehobiah, from his sons, Ishiah was the first. From the Israelites, Shilomoth. From the sons of Shilomoth, Jahath. The sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jacameam the fourth. The son of Uzziel, Micah, from the sons of Micah, Shamer. The brother of Micah, Ishiah, from the sons of Ishiah, Zechariah, the sons of Mirari, Malai and Mushai, the son of Jeuziah, Bino, the sons of Mirari, from Jeuziah, Bino, Shoham, Zachar, and Ibrai, from Malai, Eleazar, who had no sons, from Kish, the son of Kish, Jeremiel, and the sons of Mushai, Malai, Eda, and Jeremiah. These were the Levites according to their families. They also cast lots just as their relatives, the descendants of Aaron, did in the presence of King David and of Zadok, Ahimelech, and the heads of families of the priests and of the Levites. The families of the oldest brother were treated the same as those of the youngest.